Welcome to Hybrid 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to take a real-world document such as this invoice and convert it into a basic uh, ER diagram. What we need to identify though is when we look at this invoice there's several pieces of data that we need to collect. For example there's some information up here, there's some information here, some information here, and there's a bunch of different product lines, each with some different information, and that kind of stuff. Now, one of the first steps we have to do when we do this is we have to look at the gross items. Now, by gross, I don't mean disgusting, I mean the large data items. So, a few of the things we can look at, for starters, we know this is an invoice. This invoice has been sold to a specific company and shipped to a specific company. In this case, it happens to be the same company. However, this may be different. The item numbers and the descriptions are repeated down here. So these are repeated groups of data. Therefore, these are actually an entity unto themselves. Um, you can see that there's different items with different descriptions. We will be identifying some of this stuff as we go. But for starters, we're going to create a few entities and I'm using a product called uh, ERD Plus. Uh, it's a website, erdplus.com. You can see up here. And uh, it's really easy to create basic diagrams with it. So for starters, I'm going to create an entity for the invoice. I'm going to call this invoice. Um, now on this invoice, I already mentioned how we know it was sold to someone, it was also shipped to someone. Now usually both of those are customers. I'm just going to call it customer. And we also have products of some sort. So, so far we have an invoice, we have a customer, we have a product, and the invoice has product lines. So I'm going to call this one invoice products, um, specifically because it's a bridge table between invoices and products. There's a few things we need to make sure that we understand when we deal with this is that this table is what they call an associative table. It is an associative table uh, specifically because it associates, so associates two different tables to each other. And by that I mean invoice and products are associated. They can't be associated directly because otherwise we'd have to create a single product, a new product for every single invoice. And we'd have to create a new invoice for every single product. And in the end, you'd have this, this big mess of records just for three, four lines going out to a single customer. Now, when we look at other data on this form, we'll realize that realistically, some of the stuff doesn't need to be uh, done. For example, this header up here never changes. This stuff is defined in a template and that is that. Um, there's usually a footer down here, which I have removed due to uh, some sensitive information being included in there. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to create some relationships because we need to understand how everything is connected. Now, I'm going to use the connect tool, customer to invoice. Maybe, maybe not. There, customer to invoice. I don't know why I wouldn't go the other way, but it worked this way. Hey, that's fine. Entity one, entity two. So, in this case, we just put in the word has. The word has describes a customer has an invoice, an invoice has a customer. And we need to specify the relationship. Each customer can have many invoices. That makes sense. You're allowed to buy things more than once. However, each 
invoice can only ever belong to one customer because you can't bill more than one customer for the same thing. That's called fraud. And that's a big no-no. And since every invoice must have a customer, we can say this invoice has one and must have one customer. A customer, on the other hand, may have an invoice, may not have an invoice yet. The customer may have been created, however, has not been populated yet with an invoice. Sometimes you create a new customer account and you discover after a few days that they don't want to order anything or that we create a customer account and the customer doesn't order right away. It takes it a little while, such as life. That's okay. We can live with that. Now, an invoice, as you can see, is made up of multiple products. Therefore, an invoice product must have, oops, I'm doing it the wrong way. An invoice product must have an invoice. An invoice may or may not have products. Why am I making it optional? It's possible to open up an invoice and have it sitting open without actually having any product in it. That's okay. However, the invoice product should always have an invoice, otherwise it can't exist. And the same logic applies to products down here. A product may be associated to an invoice, or it may not be associated to an invoice at all, but an invoice must have a product, just like this. And now you can see, and I'm going to put my labels in, contains, um, like that. So, so far we've got a customer with an invoice and a product. With an invoice product, that's all good. Um, however, I'm creating a second relationship because you can see here that we can ship to a customer and it might be a different customer than the original customer. So this relationship, again, is going to be Um, optional many and optional and mandatory one. That's saying that each order, each invoice can be shipped each customer can be the recipient for the invoice and can be billed for the invoice. Therefore, I'm going to change this one here. To is build so that there's a nice description on it. And suddenly, boom, a customer can, we can have different information going to each invoice for each customer. Fantastic. Now, we need to populate this diagram a little more. I'm going to give myself a bit of vertical space. Maybe. There we go. Now, what we're going to do with this is I'm going to add on some attributes. It's, it's great to have this diagram. And I am actually going to save this diagram as is to show you guys as part of the hybrid what step you're at um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some attributes I'm going to start with well we're going to take start here right at the top with the invoice because we're not going to deal with this yet because we're not that far down on the invoice we have some information as to whose date invoice number sales order number purchase order number and the sales rep so I'm going to add an attribute to this, and I'm going to call this uh, date, 
and the dates can be unique because it would be really suck if you were only able to sell stuff once a day. That. Um, the invoice number. Now, the invoice number is kind of important uh, because when you think about it, it um, is unique. It is a simple way to retrieve a given invoice. Therefore, it is unique. Uh, sales order number. Now, most companies will receive a sales order first and then generate an invoice based on the sales order. Sales order numbers are unique within the sales order, but sometimes you end up invoicing the same sales order multiple times because perhaps not all the same stuff came through. The purchase order number is a customer piece of information. However, it's specific to the order, which in this case we have to reference it on the invoice. So like that. And I'm going to add an ad, another one more attribute called sales rep. Now, sales rep is special because that should be coming from a different table. For now, we're going to leave it as an attribute, but as part of the normalization process, this should be broken down to its own table. Now, the PO number, we don't always get a PO number, therefore perhaps we want to make it optional. And you'll see the little uh, notation here that makes it over optional. Like that. Okay. So our invoice is nicely populated. We've got all the basic pieces of information that we can see here. Now we're going to go down here and look at the customer information. There's an address, a city, a postal code phone number and fax, which have been blurred out somewhat. So I'm going to add an attribute. And I'm going to call this uh, customer name, add an attribute, address. And I'm going to make this one a composite. Why am I going to make it composite? It's so that we can actually add the bits and pieces. So this address is made up of all these pieces. When it gets converted to a physical diagram, which we will do later, this will become, this particular attribute won't exist. Each of these will become children of this. However, for diagramming purposes, it makes sense to break down the address into multiple pieces. Uh, we're going to add the phone number and we're going to add a fax number. Like such. <clears throat> now the problem we're having is even though this looks fairly unique, there's a few problems. We don't have a way to uniquely identify each customer. Now, what you don't see in this invoice is that there's actually a customer number associated with each of these customers. So when you don't have a way to make something unique, you probably want to throw in a synthetic key temporarily, at least so that you have a way to uniquely identify data. And we'll make this one unique. Bang. Okay, now we're down to the invoice lines. Now, if we take a quick look at the invoice lines, um, we know it's made out of products, and it looks like the products have an item number and a description of some sort. So we're going to add a couple of attributes here. And product number is probably unique for now, for we can assume that it is. And we're going to add uh, a description. And we probably should add a price, just like that. So our products have a price description, et cetera, et cetera. Now, invoice products has a few bits and pieces here. Um, there's an amount, a discount, a quantity, 
and an item number. We don't need to worry about the item number because this is implied by this relationship. However, we probably want to add a description on this because as you can see, there's some strange little things added in here. There's a number down here, number down here, and you can see it's all the same number showing up everywhere, showing that they sold the package with some modules. Uh, the prices feature the modules and it shows that they reduced the stock dongle count so that they get a credit on the bill because they already have the dongle, we charge $50 for the security devices. Therefore, there it is. So now I'm going to add an attribute on this for description and an attribute for quantity, add an attribute for the discount, and for the uh, amount. Now, depending on when you're viewing this video, you may have heard uh, the discussion in class about uh, derived attributes. If you haven't, I'm going to give a, a two-second explanation here. A derived attribute is uh, an attribute that is calculated. In other words, you can derive its value based on um, some other information. For example, the, the amount here, this is unfortunate that I picked an invoice with quantities 1, but the amount is equal to the quantity times the price. Therefore, the amount is calculated. It means we don't need to store it, usually. However, in this case, we should store it so that if the price of the product changes, we can recalculate. Uh, the other choice we have with this is we can store the selling price instead so we can calculate it every time. There's advantages to both. Um, the, having the selling price stored allows us to keep track in point in time of how much we actually sold the product for, which is kind of good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a selling price. Like such. So quantity times sell price minus the discount is equal to the amount. That means the amount is derived. We're going to mark it as derived. That means it's never actually going to be stored in the database. It means that this amount gets calculated every time it gets printed. Um, if this was a high volume company, we'd want to store the amount just for speed purposes, but it breaks some of the normalization rules because it's calculated. It shouldn't store that. So then we get down here to subtotal and again, that's derived. It's part of the invoice. So I'm going to add subtotal. And it's derived. And honestly, there should be a tax on this. If this was being sold somewhere in Canada, we'd go uh, adding tax. And I'm running out of room. And we can add one more attribute, which is total. What is the total? It's the subtotal plus tax. Again, that's derived. And now we have a diagram that describes this fairly well. There are a few things that we're missing. Shipped via should be on here somewhere. Um, same thing with, there should be some more information here uh, about the customer, what their, line, their credit limit is, that kind of stuff. But we aren't going to do this right now because we don't have visual information to prove what this stuff is. So I'm going to export this image. And that way we I have it to put up with a hybrid for you guys. Um, now enjoy this. Go answer some questions about what I did and what I discussed. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to approach me in class.